I expect that the sudden transition to online delivery of classes will result in many students being unprepared to deal with the methods of class delivery and interaction with faculty. Therefore, I wish to provide an explanation of how I plan to conduct my classes during this time away from campus. I'll be using Blackboard as our primary means of delivering lectures, distributing assignments, and conducting quizzes and exams. Lectures will take the form of pre-recorded videos that will be accessible through standard Blackboard links. Accompanying lecture notes will be available in a similar way through Blackboard. To address the issue of office hours and contact with the instructor, I'll be using WebEx. WebEx is a technology that enables video conferencing, online meetings, and the sharing of information among conference or meeting participants. While students may be familiar with many of the features of Blackboard, most students are likely unfamiliar with the features and capabilities of WebEx. In this video, I'll introduce you to some of these features. We'll now examine some of the key features of WebEx for an attendee of a meeting. This will provide the view of a student using WebEx. First, there's the concept of a personal room. The professor uses a personal room to hold live meetings with students. This could be for scheduled office hours or for individual meetings for demonstration or instruction for students who might have questions. There are two ways to enter the personal room. One is via a link from Blackboard. And what I've done is I've extended my I've extended the content of my Blackboard for my courses to include a link entitled WebEx Meeting. Notice also, by the way, that I've added another link called Announcements. Here I'll post announcements, which I'll send out through Blackboard, but they'll also be available for students to review when they log into Blackboard. But getting back to the WebEx Meeting, by clicking on this link, you'll proceed through the process of entering the personal room. Alternatively, because we're actually doing this through a web interface, you can enter an address into a web browser. So you can do this without going to Blackboard. I'll provide this address through an announcement in Blackboard. If you've clicked on the Blackboard link or you've entered the address into your browser, a message box is displayed. This message box is giving you two options. One is to open the Cisco WebEx meeting and the other is to cancel. By opening the Cisco WebEx meeting, what happens is you'll be asked to download and install software for the desktop application. If you're running on a Windows machine, this will ask you to download the WebEx.exe file. If you're unable to do an installation because of the nature of the hardware you're running on, the other option is going to be more appealing. Simply click Cancel. Clicking on Cancel will dismiss this message box, and on the screen display toward the bottom, there will be a link that says Join from your browser. Here's what the display would look like after you've dismissed the message box. Near the bottom, it says, having trouble opening the desktop app? Join from your browser. Well, even if you're not having trouble, but you just simply want to connect through the web, then click on this link. So we have two ways to continue the process to get into the personal room. This process is actually referred to as joining a meeting. Now, if you're doing this with a web app, what happens is, you'll have a little dialog where you can enter information. And what I've shown here is we're entering the first name and the last name, in this case, Hank Kiss. We're also entering the email for the student. After you've done this, you can click the next button and continue with the logon process. The reason the name is so important is we're going to see the name exposed through what's called the participants window. We have a list of everyone in attendance. This name will be used when a student asks questions. 
when we complete online quizzes or polling exercises, and when we communicate with one another using chat. So make sure you enter your name, first name and last name. Now let's examine the primary display for WebEx. As an attendee, what you'll see is a section that shows what the presenter or host of the meeting is currently sharing. Below that shared content area, there's an iconic menu. That iconic menu will display an icon or an option for the microphone. And when you click on this and unmute your mic, if you have a microphone on your system, you can communicate verbally by speaking into it and all participants or attendees will hear that. If you close or mute the mic, then anything you're saying will not be heard by other participants. The host or the presenter has the ability to mute or unmute an individual's microphone, but not everyone will have a microphone. So we'll get to another means of communication in a moment. Camera or video would be the next item here. This may or may not be made available to you, depending on how we've set up the classroom environment or the WebEx environment. But if you had a video camera, we possibly could have you show yourself. Because of the bandwidth problems with a lot of video, I'm probably going to disable this feature when I conduct my WebEx sessions. So you may not even see that icon available share. The host is going to be doing the primary sharing. So as the professor, I'll be sharing some information with you visually, and you can take a look at these files or presentations or whatever I'm using. And it's possible that the student attendees could also share something. Perhaps you have a question about something and you say, well, I've got this error message, and this is what's displayed on the screen. If you have that in a file, we can give you the ability to share that image and everyone in participation or in attendance could see that. So that's the third option. Next, we have the participant window. Clicking on this icon will open up the participant window and you can see who is currently participating. That is, who is in attendance at the meeting. Another option is the chat tool. And this I encourage everyone to keep open because this gives you the option to use chat messages or text messages to communicate with me as the host or presenter. These communications can be done privately, sent directly to me where no one else sees them, or they could be sent to everyone, kind of a public display. Everyone in attendance can see the message. This could be useful when there's a need to ask a question. Rather than doing it privately, asking it publicly so that everyone sees it could cause additional questions or meaningful responses from other folks. So it's a good idea to send messages uh, to, to public or to everyone. There's a more button, the dot, 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 the little ellipsis there. And we'll maybe mention some of those features later on but I just wanted to identify what that was. And finally, the last one, the X, is how you can leave the meeting or exit the meeting. Simply click on that and then confirm that you're going to leave the meeting. When we do communications in the personal room, there are two important displays for communicating with the host and other attendees. There's the chat. And when you've opened the chat by using the tool that we've mentioned, what you'll see is this box is displayed here with messages that have been sent. Here's an important thing to note. If I started the meeting and you attended five minutes after it started and chat messages had already been sent out, you'll not see those because you came in and opened your chat after those messages were sent. So you want to arrive on time and probably open your chat immediately. Now, toward the bottom, not really that clear, but toward the bottom of the display in the chat, there's a little rectangle, and this is where you would type in and enter your chat message. If, for example, you're logged in as Hank Kiss, then when you type your message and hit enter, the message will be sent to the chat box, and it will say that it was sent by Hank Kiss. Here the messages are revealing you, indicating this chat box image was taken as whoever sent the messages. So obviously I sent the messages, so it's me. 
noted here as saying it's you, as opposed to being some other attendee. In addition, we can have participant window displayed. And here we have a very exciting meeting. There's me as the host and Hank Kiss as the sole attendee. So we have two participants. But what is shown here is next to Hank Kiss, what we see is a little microphone icon that has a line through it. This is a signal that his microphone has been muted. And again, through the participants window, I, as the host or presenter, can mute someone's mic if they left it open. But again, the chat box will probably be the best means of communication. How do we view shared content? If I'm doing a presentation and delivering information to you, what will happen is you'll get a display like this. It says, from your perspective, you're viewing Tim Hartley's application, whatever it is I'm sharing. So here I'm ha I happen to be sharing a PowerPoint presentation. And here's the first display. It says using WebEx as a meeting attendee. You'll see beneath it the iconic toolbar that we've just discussed. To the right, there are two important areas. The participant window, I continued to keep open so that I could see this information. And additionally, up above, it says Tim Hartley host. This is the person that is currently speaking. So we're sharing Tim Hartley's application, and that is Tim Hartley presenting. Now, what we might want to do is take this limited amount of real estate we have here and release some of it to expand the shared content display. So we could close the participant window. We can do that by clicking the little X in the upper right corner or clicking on the participant iconic tool. We also could reduce the size of the information that says this is the person who's actually talking at the moment by hitting the little arrow in the upper left display. And when we do that, we've significantly increased the size of the display, making it more readable. Additionally, if you hover over the displayed shared content, a little set of tools appears here. There's a little plus and a little minus for increasing or decreasing the size of that shared content display. And there's also these kind of opposing uh, little arrows, which can be used to give you full screen display. So we have a few options for kind of adjusting or adapting what's being shown here, making it a little bit more readable. So to wrap up what we presented here, we've seen how to enter a WebEx meeting through the personal room. We presented the most general features of WebEx from the perspective of a meeting attendee. In addition, the features that we presented are available through both methods of joining the meeting, whether you use the desktop application or whether you go through the web application. We talked about using chat to ask questions and make comments and effectively participate in the meeting. We talked about using a microphone to communicate if you have one, but I assume that not everyone will have one, so it's probably best to just rely on chat. But remember, we talked about how to open and close the mic or uh, to unmute or mute the mic. We talked about viewing the shared content presented by the presenter or the instructor. There are additional features available through the desktop application, but what we've seen is you can use everything that I've talked about through the desktop or the web application. So if you're using desktop, there are a few other things you can take advantage of, but what we've shown should be sufficient for you to participate in an online meeting using WebEx. If you've got questions, uh, send, send me an email, communicate through Blackboard, and we'll try to answer those right away.